What is up guys, 70 Savage here, coming at you with a very exciting project today. Today we are starting the full bathroom install inside of the van. If you are new to the channel, we have been converting this Sprinter van right here into a full on tiny home. We are doing the entire build DIY. We've installed the floor, the cabinets, the electrical system, the plumbing system, all of these lights that you see out here. And we are documenting the entire process along the way. There is a video on everything that you see in this van on this channel. If you do like this video and this type of content, slap that subscribe button below. We are gonna keep making videos and we're gonna keep trying to make these videos better. Since this project is so big, I'm gonna be splitting it up into multiple parts. There will be two parts in total. First one, we are gonna install the enclosure for the shower. We are also gonna be connecting the shower head and making the shower fully functional. And in part two, we are gonna be covering the toilet. So enough with the ramblings, let's go ahead and dive right in. So to give you guys a little bit of context about what our layout looks like. We got basically our entire living space in the front of the van here. These two seats swivel around and make a nice little living area. We have our shower, which is going to go in this section right here. Then we have our electrical and water utility cabinets in the back underneath where the bed will be eventually. So the very first step for this bathroom install, we get to remove our massive pile of tools. And now we have a clean open space where our bathroom is going to live. You can see we've already framed out the location for it with these aluminum extrusions. The entire van was actually framed with these 80-20 aluminum extrusions. We did that all in one step in the beginning of the build and there is a video about it on the channel. So now we're left with a 36 inch long by 24 and a little bit more inches deep space here. We are currently standing in what is soon to be our bathroom. Considering we are in a van, literally something that's supposed to carry cargo around, I'm pretty satisfied with how big we were able to make this bathroom space. I could kind of move around a little bit. So as far as actually making the enclosure for a bathroom in a van, there are a few different ways to go about it. Most people will just make the walls of the shower out of something like FRP board, which is a form of plastic, making it a great material for a shower. And then they'll caulk over the edges with either a silicone or a polyurethane caulk. I was very close to doing that option myself, but the truth is we are a little bit pressed on time right now. I'm already not making these videos fast enough for you guys. I would like to do these much more often and I still have to fund this entire build with a day job. So I took a route that's a little bit less time intensive for the trade-off of it being ridiculously expensive. Kind of seems to be the theme in this van. So what we are going to do is a pre- fabricated shower enclosure made by a company called Van Wife Customs. This is a super lightweight aluminum powder coated shower enclosure. So it's completely waterproof. By the way, you might be able to tell that taking over my parents' barn is getting more and more clustered here. I don't wanna give too much information away, but we are making some moves in the near future and I have some very exciting news to share with you guys in a few weeks. Anyways, let's go ahead and open this puppy up. First impression is that if I was a kid and I saw this box, you already know we'd be building the Taj Mahal of box forts. So inside the box here, we have our shower pan, and then we have a bunch of pre-cut powder coated white aluminum panels. And as far as I can tell, this is 100% of the hardware and instructions that we're gonna need. So based on the instructions, it's pretty darn simple. You basically just put the walls up against each other and then you use the rivets here to attach each wall to the next one. But based on the last 50 or so projects I've done, it feels pretty simple right about now and starts to get more and more complex the deeper that we dive. All right, so we are putting the panels in place just to kind of get a feel for what they're going to look like. Pro tip, you need to build the shower exactly where it's going to actually live in the van. You're not gonna be able to move this thing around inside of the van once it's built. So if you build it outside and then try and bring it in here, not gonna work. First impressions of these components when I'm pulling them out of the box, I know I was giving them a bit of a hard time on price because this shower is frankly insanely expensive, but they're really nice. Not only are they like insanely lightweight sheets of aluminum, which is awesome because I'm trying to keep weight down, been eating a little bit too much during the old COVID. Also the powder coating on these panels is 
flawless. It looks really, really good. First preview of the shower door here. You can see it only takes up a portion of the overall 36 inches so that you don't have to have some massive hallway for this thing to swing out. Build quality on this is also pretty insane and it is super lightweight for how robust it is. So for the next step of the shower install, what we need to do is drill holes into the bottom of the shower pan and all the way through the bottom of the floor of the van. We need two of them in total one of them for the water drain and one of them for the exhaust vent hose from the toilet. As for these holes, all I did was use a regular drill bit to drill a test hole to make sure that we were in the right location. And once I did that, I came in with the two inch hole saw bit. With the hole saw bit, I drill 90% of the way up through the bottom. And then I come in from the top for the last 10% to get a nice clean cut on both sides. My favorite reward, the hole saw sandwich. All right, that joke's getting old. Then all I do is rust protect it by spraying it with Rust-Oleum black spray paint. Alrighty, so we dropped the shower pan into the shower there and marked the holes from the bottom so that we have the two exact locations that we need to drill out. So I'm at Jeremy's new shop now, which also happens to be a classic car place. Not sure if you guys remember Jeremy from the floor video. He is the savior of the floor in our van. We are getting the shower pan welded right over there. All right, first look at the stainless drains here. All right, so this is what Jeremy uses for his shower pans. He has the same van wife shower in the vans that he builds. And this is kind of like a little short version of a drain you can get from Home Depot. And then where'd you get this P-trap? E-trailer, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's just basically you can use it on a sink or on a shower uh, to reduce the amount of space that a P-trap would normally take up, which they can be quite big and there's not room for them. So this is like the shortest combination of drain plus P-trap we could find. And what you do with this one is you would just drill a big hole in the floor of the van, like, I don't know, a three, four inch hole, so this whole unit could sit flush with the bottom of the shower pan and then you just tighten it from the bottom. So as you guys saw before, I have the two drains mounted directly to the shower pan. They are waterproof welded to the top here. I can basically guarantee with this that there's gonna be no water seeping in between the floor of the van and the metal frame. We got the pan in, that was pretty simple. Thankfully our drain holes lined up perfectly because that would have been a problem. From the top, it might appear that these holes are in very awkward locations. And that is because there's a ton of stuff underneath these vans, like support structures that you have to avoid in order to drill holes. So I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask about a fan in the shower slash roast me for not having a fan in the shower. I was originally going to put one of the Max Fan Dome Plus fans in here. I actually bought one, it's sitting in my barn right now. But the challenge is on the roof, I need to put solar panels. I wouldn't be able to put a solar panel directly above that fan. If I do put a fan in the shower, I'm basically reducing the total amount of solar panels that I can have on the roof by 25%, which is a little bit too much for me, especially considering that this shower door has a vent built into it at the top, as you guys saw, which will organically allow for some airflow. Also, it's really not that big of a deal if I decide I do need to install one of those fans at some point. Because I'm not using that fan slash light built into the roof, I am going to be installing one of the puck lights that I'm putting on the rest of the ceiling in the center of the the bathroom here so that you can see what you're doing when you're in there. Pretty simple. I'm just going to drill a hole in the roof with a hole saw and then connect it to the same circuit as these lights right here. So we got a hole. It was a little bit messy. The light turned out great. Our next step is very exciting. We are going to be riveting the shower walls together. So the rivets that are included in the shower are these black ones here. They seem to have a black and white theme going on with the whole shower and that is not the aesthetic that I'm going for in my van build. So first step was to order rivets that were not black. We got white ones. These should blend in with the shower much better. I'll put a link to these bad boys in the description below. So what we're doing right now is starting out with two scrap pieces of aluminum and we are riveting them together to kind of get the feel for what these rivets feel like. Let's go ahead and do a second one. Thing you need if you want to install a rivet is a hole. So we're going to drill ourselves a hole. As far as rivet tools go, you can get them at your local hardware store. And all we need to do is put our rivet into the hole. That was one full compression. Two full compressions. One more. So you just heard that really loud sound and you can see there's no more steel shaft sticking through this rivet here. If we take this piece out of the vise now, you'll be able to see that the rivet is compressed on the back. 
And these two pieces of metal are very well stuck together. That's all it takes to use a rivet and a rivet gun. Midway through this project, I'm actually switching to a different riveter here. And you guys know me, I'm always going a little bit overboard on things. I am going to use a little bit of this 3M4200 on the inside of the flanges of the rivets, the part that touches up against the wall. Also, in the center of the rivets, I'm using a small dab that is going to prevent water from getting inside the rivets themselves. All right, so for the next step, we are going to install the actual shower portion of this bathroom. The shower in this bathroom is going to have three different components. One of them is the actual shower head. It's gonna be a simple removable shower head that came with this mount. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Second component is going to be the mixed water output. That is going to be the thing that connects to this hose in order to provide us water for our shower. And then the third component, which is very important, is our shower mixer here. This is what actually does the mixing of the hot and cold water so that you can get that perfect temp. First thing we gotta do to install these is drill some holes in the back of our shower here and get them mounted. The only thing here that I had to get a little bit creative about was this uh, water outlet thingy. This just has a female pipe thread on the back. Typically you would mount like a brass firm connection and then screw this thing onto it. In my case, I don't have something to mount the back of this to. So what I am doing is I have a brass female to female elbow. I have a little tiny short stainless steel nipple in there. You can see it with the tape around it. And then I cut a piece of this black Delrin plastic as a spacer. And what I'm going to do is screw it into the back and basically clamp this thing to the aluminum. It's gonna end up looking something like this where that blue tape that you see is the wall of the shower. So we have all three components mounted here, two screws for the holder for the faucet. We have the mixer and then we have the output into the shower head. This right here is what they look like on the inside. I did it like this because the mixer is kind of out of the way of the head. So you can mount the head and turn the water off when you need to do your military style showers to conserve water. I do know it's very strange that I have a chrome mixer and then a kind of satin shower head. They don't sell this in satin. Leave a comment below if this is something that irked you before I started mentioning it. So the next step is making this shower actually waterproof. What that means is we are going to seal all of the edges anywhere there's a seam in the entire shower with caulk. So they actually recommend just using silicone caulk, but I haven't had the best luck using silicone for things like this in the past, especially when it's something as important as a shower. So I'm gonna be using the same stuff that I used to seal all of the rivets in here, this 3M5200. It is like a permanent polyurethane adhesive. There's a little test section here. Basically this stuff is still soft. You can poke it pretty easily with your fingernail. Not as soft as silicone though. Uh, soft enough to be flexible, which is the only important part. And it adheres insanely, insanely well. Like these little tidbits down here, if they were silicone, it'd be pretty easy to just kind of scratch them off with your fingernail. But this stuff is pretty durable. This stuff actually isn't available in California at the moment, which means you know that it's good. And not that I'm advising about doing anything illegal. I would never advise you to go to the link in the description below to order this stuff if you live in California. Alrighty, so we got all of the caulking done and it came out somewhere between mediocre and atrocious. There were definitely some tough areas to caulk, like in this corner up here and I spread it a little bit too wide in some of the sections. A couple things I learned on this is that tape does not stick to powder coat very well, so I couldn't use the tape method to ensure that I had nice straight lines on the edge of the caulk lines. I ended up just keeping it really simple and putting a bead of caulk in and then spreading it with my finger. The good news though is that it does serve its purpose and this is now completely watertight in here. So the next step for these fixtures is actually making them work, which should be pretty darn simple considering we already have our hot and cold lines ready Ready to go. So we got all of our connections here. We have the cold and hot coming from the system, which go into the cold and hot inputs of our mixer. Then the output of our mixer, our nice 
warm water into the spigot or shower head. And if you guys couldn't tell, we use Oopener fittings. There is an entire video that's like 40 minutes long that I just uploaded on the entire details of our whole water system if you're more interested in how this piping works. But it is super modern and I absolutely love it. So we've just gone from Oopener to pipe, which is the back side of the mixer here. And then we've gone from pipe to Oopener back to pipe because you actually need to be able to twist this thing when you're installing it, right? Like it twists on both sides. And it actually took me so long to figure something out in my last van that was able to twist in the middle, but still be able to seal on both sides. Thankfully, this opener pack can rotate freely and still maintain its water pressure. So that made this simple as butter, smooth as butter. So a moment of truth now, let's go ahead and turn the water pump on and see if any of our new plumbing leaks. Water pump. He is a pumping. Oh, should probably allow some water into it. Our pump stopped, which means we have a fully pressurized system. Not seeing any leaks on any of our new fittings here, which is pretty darn cool. So now we have our shower head. Let's try and turn it on and see what happens. There we go. We got water. So uh, I can't say that it's amazing pressure. In fact, it's a little bit dissatisfying. That's for two reasons. This is a California legal shower head. Yes, believe it or not, California regulates those as well. So it only allows 1.5 gallons a minute to flow. Let's see what it looks like from here. Well, it does reach the other side pretty easily. Super excited though. I mean, we literally have a shower inside of our van right now. Something is so surreal to me about putting a shower in a vehicle. So instead of all the water draining directly onto the ground, what we want to do is connect our stainless steel pipe that's welded onto the shower pan all the way back to our gray water tank. That's actually a spare tire gray water tank over there so that we can capture the water and then drain it when it is appropriate. All right, so we finished the gray drain for the shower. We did something a little bit strange. It comes at the bottom there. It goes straight into a bend, which gets routed kind of towards the center of the van here. The sink drain comes up and over the top and drains into the top of the gray water tank. And I don't think that would have been enough uh, flow for the water to actually drain from the shower. So I have the shower one coming down. It's this bottom one here and it comes into the bottom of the gray tank. Now, if you want more details on this gray tank and how I hooked up the whole gray water system, you can find that in the water video. Also, I got about a hundred comments on my gray drain that do not have P-traps. In a van, you have natural dips and rises in your gray system that act as a P-trap. It's also not that big of a deal to add a P-trap later, so... I'm gonna use this system how it is, and if it does start to smell, I'll let you guys know and I'll add a P-trap. But for now, similar to how it was in my last van, Vangelina Jolie, I had no issues, and I'd rather have that additional pressure of not having the P-trap so that things drain faster. All right, so we got the drain hooked up. Let's go ahead and see if it actually works. All right, what we're checking for here is just making sure that after we get enough water in there that it doesn't fill and it keeps draining. All right, so we just pumped a bunch of water in there, definitely enough to make sure that it works. The drain does indeed drain faster than it fills. You can see here that if you do have a flat shower pan in your van and you take a shower, it's gonna collect water and look exactly like this. There's about an eighth inch of water or a quarter inch of water. You can put a kind of traction pad or something in the shower so that you are not standing directly on it and you're standing a little bit above it. It's probably what I'll do, but you do want to make sure that all this water gets dried up eventually because it will just sit there and mold over time. All right, so the very last step that we have to do for this shower enclosure is mount it to our 8020 frame so that it is super sturdy and in place and will not move a single millimeter when we start off riding this thing. Got our first hole drilled here, no problem at all. We finished all four mounting points. We have two in the top, bang, bang, and then two in the bottom corners all the way down there. You can see right now that I have the massive fender washers on here. The hardware store ran out of the regular size ones, so I gotta order some of those. For now, we're stuck with the ugly big ones. Reason I did these ones right here, a couple inches from the top towards the center, I'm gonna be able to hang a clothing rod across there and actually bolt it to the walls 
If I ever want to kind of repurpose the shower to hang clothes or maybe dry out uh, snowboarding clothes or something like that. As for how we actually mounted these things, we just attached little chunks of 8020, secured them to our strong 8020 frame, and then put a T nut on the opposite side of this little bar, and the bolt goes directly into it. Nice part about that is I don't have to be able to access both sides of this in order to remove those bolts. Did the same thing on the bottom section here, just cut off a little piece of 8020 and bolted it to the frame. And now we have four secure mounting points. This shower is not going anywhere. And believe it or not, guys, that is actually the final step for completing our shower here. The entire enclosure is good to go. It is 100% sealed, functional, sturdy, and the shower actually works. We are going to install the toilet in the next video. So if you're interested in seeing that, slap the subscribe button below. Overall, I am super happy with how this shower turned out. I really like how they designed the shower as far as aesthetics. By the way, I am 6'5", and this is what it looks like while I'm standing in the shower here. I uh, obviously can't stand up fully in here, but it's pretty darn close. So thank you for watching the entire video. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, slap that like button below. It helps push this video out to more people in the YouTube algorithm. Thank y'all so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.